All right, let's continue with the lecture where we left off. And that is with the purpose of the Gospel of John. The purpose of this gospel is apologetic, designed to inspire belief in those who read it or heard it read, or those who read it or heard it read. Um, it is possible that John's gospel was written as a conscious attempt to supplement the current accounts of the life and work of Jesus in the Synoptic Gospels given that John does not include many distinctive features in these Gospels, such as the ministry in Galilee and the parables. So I've heard this theory by at least one author, um, that the, uh, the Gospel of John uh, knew about the other Gospels and so chose not to repeat the same material and only wanted to focus on different aspects of the ministry of Jesus and that's the reason for the differences. Um, so that's one theory. Uh, I don't think it's a dominant theory. I'm not sure most scholars think that. And it may have some tradition. Um, I'm not sure there's other evidence besides that. Um, and I, again, I don't think that's a very um, widespread view among different scholars, but it is at least one theory about the reason for the differences. So John has been called a spiritual gospel, emphasizing the divine side of the story of Jesus. While, or while John largely seems independent of the synoptic gospels, it is important um, to remember that all four gospels describe the same person. We need them all to grasp the total picture of Jesus All right, let's look at characters. One unique aspect of John's gospel is its development of characters and sketches separated by intervals of texts. Characters such as Nicodemus, Philip, Thomas, Mary, and Martha, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, are mentioned naturally and easily as they are recalled in connection with the main narratives. The fourth gospel uses both prominent and obscure characters as examples of belief and unbelief. All right, we'll turn now to chapter 12, which covers the life of Christ. So we've seen the four different gospels, uh, and we've seen different emphases or aspects of each one or unique distinctives of each one. So we need to sort of um, combine ideas from all of them to see the overall life of Christ that emerges. So the amount of information about Jesus in the literature of his time outside the Bible is comparatively meager. Um, I've taught a class on the life of Christ, and I've covered some of that, uh, some of the evidence. There is some. There are some references to Jesus among uh, Roman authors and also among in uh, Josephus. Some of that is, some of those are debated or controversial, but at least there's enough evidence to um, show us that Jesus was a historical person. And then there are other references to Jesus in later Jewish writings, such as the Talmud, and of course also in the um, Muslim Quran, but those come from uh, much later um, centuries, so they are um, not as valuable in terms of being an early witness of the life of Christ. Overall, the gospel, the four gospels that we have in the Bible, are the best uh, best sources for learning the life of Jesus. So, aside from the four gospels and a few scattered references to Jesus in the epistles. First century history is almost silent concerning him. A few references to Christ and Christianity that can be cited appear in the Antiquities of Josephus, histories written by Tacitus and Suetonius, Pliny's letter to Trajan, 
and a satire of Lucian. While these references were written by men who were ignorant of Christianity and hostile to its principles, they, for the most part, they nonetheless showed that Christianity was widespread by the second century and the historic evidence of Christ was generally acknowledged. We see at least that he was a historic person and the basic um, aspects of his life that we see in the Gospels is confirmed. And we also see that there's very early evidence that Christians worshipped Jesus uh, from the earliest time. So it's not a later legendary development that they they thought of Jesus being the Son of God. It was from the earliest times they believed that. The four Gospels are not exhaustive, and a full biography of Jesus cannot be reconstructed from them. The Gospels are much more concerned with presenting a person than with writing a story. All the Gospels show a rise in Jesus' appeal to the public, a crisis at which he is rejected by the leaders and then abandoned by the populace. He is also not well understood by his disciples. The resurrection is the crowning event of Jesus' career. There can be no legitimate doubt that the Gospels intended to proclaim that Jesus had physically risen from the dead. The active life of Jesus was spent within the confines of Palestine, a territory comprising not more than 10,000 square miles. This land is divided into four general sections, the coastal plain, the hill country, the valley of the Jordan, and a mountainous plateau east of the Jordan, bordered by the desert. The majority of the population lived in the hill country. In the north was Galilee, Jesus' home country. South of Galilee was Samaria, the former center of the northern kingdom of Israel. South of Samaria was Judea. Jesus and his disciples toured Galilee and apparently visited most of the villages of the district. Jesus' ministry in Judea was confined to the city of Jerusalem and a few outlying villages. There are numerous references to Jerusalem and the Gospels, and the important landmarks of Jerusalem were familiar to Jesus and the authors of the Gospels. The Gospels speak frequently of Jesus' teaching. Instruction was a specialty of Jesus, and the effectiveness of his teaching can be seen by the way his disciples remembered his words and repeated them to others. While the teaching devices used by Jesus were also used by well-known Jewish rabbis of the day, Jesus used them more effectively. There was a directness, freshness, and authority in the teaching of Jesus that made him more effective than his contemporaries. The method of teaching for which he is best known is the parable, which is an extended metaphor or the description of a common object or action as an illustration of spiritual truth. The parables served special purposes, such as being readily understood by hearers, being easily remembered, and having an application that was always relevant to the needs of the hearers. Jesus also taught with epigrams, short, powerful statements that would stick in the minds of the hearers. Occasionally, Jesus employed argument in his teaching, but when he did so, he usually argued on the basis of scripture rather than from abstract ideas. He also taught with question and answer with questions related to the deepest human problems. On some occasions, he used object lessons, such as taking a little child to illustrate humility. 
all of the teaching of Jesus had an oral and spiritual purpose that was connected to his mission on which the Father had sent him. The body of teaching is scattered throughout the Gospels with different sections having a different focus of teaching. The subjects Jesus addressed were varied, including several ethical, social, and religious aspects of human life, as well as the nature of God. The teachings were not organized into a system, but around his own person. The value of the teaching depends on him. Certain teachings of Jesus have strong importance to Christian doctrine. Christian theology. Uh, Jesus presented God as a heavenly father. While Jesus was son of God by nature, the disciples could become sons of God by receiving Christ. The term father expressed God's attitude toward men, showing his love and justice, interest and concern for his creation, forethought and purpose, forgiving attitude, and final determination of human destiny. Perhaps the greatest single topic Jesus discussed was the kingdom of God, and this is described by Matthew as the kingdom of heaven. Uh, but it's the same uh, same phrase or same term, same uh, concept, just different terminology. All of the Gospels mention Jesus preaching the kingdom. The doctrine of the kingdom was linked with the Old Testament and called for repentance, obedience to the commandments of God's law, and the wholehearted commitment to doing the will of God. The kingdom can be described as the rule which God shall establish over the earth when Christ returns. Its principles will conform to the highest spirit of holiness contained in the revealed law, and its perfection will come only through the work of Christ, who is the Redeemer and King. The teaching of Jesus concerning himself is of great significance. As a boy, he informed his parents of his special obligation to his Heavenly Father. He questioned his disciples about their belief in him and accepted with approval Simon's reply that he was the Son of God and also the Christ or the Messiah. Uh, in debating opponents, he used language that referred to his pre existence and deity. It's especially so in the Gospel of John. He did not restrain believers who worshiped him. The Gospels declare clearly that Jesus was supernatural in origin and claimed to be deity or claimed to be God. Jesus' estimate of his own mission is also important. He came to preach the good news of the kingdom, to call sinners to repentance, to seek and save the lost, to minister, and to give his life as a ransom for humanity. While the spiritual and ethical topics on which Jesus made pronouncements are too many to detail. One common characteristic of his teachings is that they were all based on the assumption that he had come to proclaim God's truth, that he had authority to do so, and that humanity was obligated to follow his teaching. He represented himself as the Son of God, whose word is final. All right, so that covers um, the main part of our lesson. I've got some, a couple of primary readings I want to cover as well from the Gospels of Luke and John. So we'll start with um, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. This is the parable of the lost son, one of Jesus' best known parables. Again, this is not for the most part seen as a true story, but uh, it is a story that Jesus tells to prove a point. 
here he's comparing um, the the the, uh, the sinners that he's reaching out to, and that are coming, that are attracted to him, and uh, uh, drawing close to God through him and repenting of their sins to the Jewish religious leaders uh, that are not happy with what he's doing. Uh, actually, let's uh, let's pause here. Got to take one more quick break, and then we'll continue with this reading. Um, and the uh, uh, shortly, so we'll take just a quick break, and we'll continue with uh, with these gospel readings. <laughs> 